Hello YouTube, I am putting this video together today because I've been asked by uh, a couple people uh, at this point uh, about my VR setup that I have with my Oculus Rift. You know, this is obviously, you know, pretty big right now. There's lots of VR stuff going on. It's super exciting. I've been talking about it with a lot of people. Um, something I invested in back in last uh, November of uh, 2016. Um, I wasn't even going to buy the first generation like VR stuff. Um, just because, you know, I'm not rich, I can't, you know, buy all the, the brand new stuff. I was going to wait for the next gen stuff and, you know, for all the kinks to be worked out. But uh, a friend had told me about a uh, particular specific game uh, that was going to come out. Uh, he told me in November and immediately was like, oh, I'm going to buy it. I'm buying it right now. So uh, I bought it. The game was supposed to come out in December. It's been pushed back uh, for a while. Uh, it's actually coming out next week, May 30th. So those of you that, that, are, uh, that know that date, you'll know what game I'm talking about. Super excited. Game I've been waiting for all my life. Um, but VR, it's super exciting, you know, it's uh, really compelling, it's, you know, I'm 37 years old, this is like the best game experience I've ever had, I've been waiting all my life for, like as a kid, like waiting for something like this, like really being in the game and, you know, being able to really, you know, see everything that's going on around you and like have, you know, a higher level of interaction, it's exciting and extremely compelling. You know, and the thing about it is like, you know, at this point, like there's, you know, a couple different systems you can buy and, and for the most part, for you know, if I'm making comparisons to systems, I'm really talking about the, you know, the Rift and the Vive, really. Like, you know, they have the, the PlayStation VR, but it's like, it's not full room scale VR. So for the purposes of like kind of the setup and everything I'm talking about, it doesn't really apply. But, you know, when you're looking at kind of those, the full room scale VR, like that kind of stuff, like it can be a little bit daunting. Like, you know, people are buying these setups and systems and, you know, doing it and, you know, getting pretty good results. And it's really compelling and exciting. But, you know, part of it too is like, showing other people, you know, I've had a number of people come over here and like, in particular, because of the setup that I have, like, it, it's like it, not a, a simple thing, you know, trying to really get the full experience and taking advantage of your full space. I want to put this video to show kind of the setup that I have, <clears throat> because I have a couple different things going on. I have uh, the three sensor setup uh, with the Rift. Uh, I have a sensor here, here, and then a sensor uh, back over here, which I'll show. Um, you know, and I had set up in such a way that like with some extenders and there's, so th this is the thing, like you get the base Oculus set up, you set it up, okay, it's, it's cool. You know, you can, you know, sit in front of your computer and do stuff. But like, once you start doing full room scale, there's other considerations, right? The, the cord that you get, like the setup for, it's not really conducive to, you know, full, you know, um, full scale room VR because you know you got this cord that you got to deal with and like that's like a trip hazard and you know there's different things you kind of start thinking about like of how you kind of want to run cables and stuff like that you can kind of see it some of it in the background um, so I wanted to set up something that was going to be really fun that was going to work out all that you know in addition um, you know to the uh, full room scale you know type games <clears throat> some of the simulation type games um, I'm not really into the driving games I try some of them it makes me super sick uh, I have a pretty strong VR stomach, but not uh, the driving games just don't work out. But I like flight sims and stuff like that. So there's a particular one I play and I set up, which will show like a whole setup with the chair and all that to get a really awesome uh, setup to do like flight sims, uh, which is a lot of fun. Once you start doing this, you start getting into a lot of issues of what works with what. I mean, I had to do tons of research online. I found tons of different articles of like how to do all this stuff. So this is really the kind of the conglomeration of you know, a number of different things that I found that I kind of all brought together to ultimately give myself a pretty good system. You know, part of it is because VR is such a fledgling, you know, new kind of thing. Like it's all of our responsibility, right? Like as we're showing to other people and, and getting people excited about it, to have a setup that's not only good for ourselves, but like to show off to other people, you know, you don't want to sour the experience, right? Like, because we all know, like you're watching this video because it's awesome, right? And you want to get the most out of it as you possibly can. And uh, a couple things to note, actually, a couple things to note real quick. Um, one, I'm wearing this super annoying headset uh, just to record my audio. That's why I'm not like waiting for a phone call or anything like that. Um, not that important. Um, but it just using the ambient mic on the microphone is terrible and I don't have like a really good setup to do audio. So, um, and the other thing to know is I wanted to do this pretty off the cuff. Um, so I didn't like stage anything. I didn't get any of my shit ready or anything like that. Like. This is how everything is set up from a normal day-to-day -day basis is I'm just going about my daily business, doing all my stuff, not doing, you know, gaming VR stuff, which, you know, I don't have a ridiculous amount of time to do. So that stuff's all sort of aside. So through this process, I'm gonna show you how, like, when I'm ready to game, like, how it all kind of comes together and how it works, like, pretty easily and quickly. So I think that's part of the, part of the fun. Uh, but to just show off real quick, like, 
so you can see here there's the camera high the only thing i did set up was you know so you know the, i set the camera up and a couple lights here just because the lighting in here is terrible so um you know so here's my desk sort of set up here um computer and like i said i just i didn't clean my office i get crap everywhere and there's sort of the the riff set up um, and then here's how I have, you'll see it when I'm going, uh, hanging from this thing here, there's my sensor in the back. Um, actually, incidentally, if you see this, in the, <laughs> I have another video uh, where I show this whole uh, truck uh, that I made with the camera, remote control, super awesome. I never finished the video and, it, and I actually finished the truck. I, I completed a lot of the things I actually had mentioned in the video. Um, so if anyone's actually interested in seeing sort of the conclusion to that, I can do a follow-up video where I show the, the parts I 3D printed, how I did some of the rewiring, completed the body, and how kind of it ultimately all sort of came together, but that's a whole other fun uh, story. Um, but first, let's show some, some dead and buried, and let's see what, what this looks like. So you can see here, so this is going to be the setup, right? Okay, so I'm ready to play. I'm going to get my chair out of the way. I always have this hanging off the wall here, so let's pull this off. Take a quick check quick clean right you always want to your eyeballs are like you know right on these things so you want to make sure they're clean so everything I do is headphones you know all that like I don't really use my speakers um, I have uh, kids a three-year-old and a six-year-old and they're both sleeping right now as I do this so um, yeah so all right so we got touch controllers Headset. Right. Um, oh, okay. So this is the thing I forgot. We're doing dead and buried. Okay. So I, I already did put on, you guys can't really see my sneakers for this game because it's serious. You're moving around like, this is no joke. You don't want to get shot. So not only do I have sneakers on, but for this game, because I'm an old man and I have wood floors, um, I do actually have, and highly recommend, especially for this game, a new pets. So I'm going to put those on right now. Okay. Okay, we've got the knee pads going. Super duper important. All right. Um, so this is probably the only game, by the way, that uh, it's probably the only game that I wear knee pads on. Because so this is some serious biz. All right. Oh, this is gonna be good. Doing this off the cuff. I hope this works. Okay, should we uh, check the space? Should be pretty good. Quick calibration. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do a little uh, shootout here. This is my personal favorite. <clears throat> yeah, what's up? Yep, yep. What's up, gents? Oh, shit. How do I talk to people? You continue well, it's talking. Happening. It's happening. Shit. I didn't do this before. I'm sorry. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even my VR. I'm stealing it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Mathens adult. Wait. Mateos is all. HD is all. Mateo, is it something? Mateo, that's who you are now. Ah, this is the worst level, right? Let's roll, ready up, come on. Clearly, I can't hear anyone. Let's do this, yo. Oh, that's... oh, my sound is fucked up. What the fuck? See, that's. Ah, son of a bitch. Oh, shit. Is this the lights? What am I hitting? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh. There's no cover. Got me. Ooh. <laughs> oh, good job. Ooh. <laughs> Come on. 
You know, in this. Oh, shit. Get him. Oh, there it is. Victory. That's... you can kill yourself. Hmm. Alright. So that's a quick, um... Kind of just a quick show of what the setup looks like. I don't even know what that looked like. I think it was like bumping in the lights and all that. But generally speaking, you know, it's really good. Like as far as the hand tracking, all that I can move around because of the cable over here. And again, I'll, I'll show some close, more closer up of everything I have because the cable, the way it strings behind me doesn't like get around, tangled around my feet. I can move around effectively. And even though this is a small space in my whole space without, um, you know, getting tangled up or caught in the cord or anything like that. So, which is pretty cool. So the next thing is to show the setup from a seated position, uh, the War Thunder type gameplay, uh, which I'll show more details on sort of the setup that I have here, but I'm going to hook everything up real quick. So this is just some my normal office chair, how I would normally sit at my computer, and hey, I want to set up and play some War Thunder. It takes a couple minutes uh, to do the full setup. It's definitely worth it. I'll probably speed through some of this, but so you can see, kind of get an idea of what, what it sort of looks like. Uh, the main important tool that you need for this endeavor is the Phillips head screwdriver, which I'll set right here. Okay, so with all this that you just saw, with this setup here, this is what I've set up. Um, so everything you saw me doing on the chair right now, you can see I have a, a Satec flight control system. Uh, it's an X52. Um, that mounts on here directly on my chair, which is super awesome. Uh, every time I do this, it's locked. And then the other thing that I have that you kind of saw me hook up real quick, which I'll show off, is uh, uh, basically haptic feedback in my chair. So I installed bass shakers in my chair with a preamp uh, under my seat and four speakers installed in the chair. So that way when I'm shooting guts doing stuff, you feel the vibration and all that it really makes a huge difference. And it was, took a little bit to get that going. Uh, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, there's several different people that have put some um, instructions and build lists together and things like that. So I kind of just went off that and put a lot of stuff together, which I'll show into my specific build. Uh, and it works great. I still have a few little things to iron out. It's not hundred percent, but it's pretty dang good. Um, so we're playing War Thunder. So in this case, Steam. So let me get that going. All right, game is starting. Do you need to use the mouse a little? What should we fly? This is the question. We can do a P-51, which is always fun. I love the P-38 myself, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. A little bit more bass. Yeah, I feel that plane. Yeah, that's... Picking with gas. Right. Don't burn the engine. Look at this. I mean, look at look at the carpet. Look at my hammer. If I'm doing the throttle. Oh, look at that. So, <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. Some bad guys. And these are all real people. For anyone that's not familiar with the game. Ooh, B17. Let's let's get these motherfuckers. And you're peeling. Okay. This is the man right here. You're all by yourself. What the fuck? It's true. Then look at my radar, the thing that shouldn't exist in this time, but you know. Oh my god, I can't even.
No thanks to me. <laughs> Show the bread and butter of obviously what you want to uh, see here is, sort, is the setup. Uh, what I have to get that, it looks pretty simple and straightforward, but you're not going to get that out of the box because the cord links aren't enough. Uh, even with some of the things that they um, go with, which was like a six foot, I think, HDMI extension, things like that. It's really not quite enough to really get what you want. And I've gone beyond that and I actually have a system that's pretty stable. So that's, again, the whole kind of the whole point of what to show you guys here. Um, so I figured I'd start with sort of uh, the PC and kind of work my way out and, and kind of tell you guys the, the set of what's going on. And again, I'll put some information in the description for a lot of this stuff here. Uh, so first and foremost, um, I'm running on a, a pretty reasonably powerful PC. I have a i7 Extreme Edition. It runs like at four gigahertz, uh, six core, 64 gig of RAM. And I have a Titan X uh, graphics card. Uh, so. You know, it's, I use it as like a workstation kind of machine for some other stuff, but it makes a great uh, gaming machine, obviously, a uh, great VR machine. So I have that now. So this is the big thing. Like, you want to get a good HDMI extension uh, because you need to get the length to do what, what I did and what I'm going to show you. Uh, but the issue is, like, they don't officially, Oculus doesn't officially support anything beyond uh, six foot. Uh, they recommend some cables. Um, I went with a, I believe it's a 10 footer, I'll, I'll pull the specifics, but I believe it was a 10 foot HDMI extension um, uh, or, or more even. Uh, but big thing, mono price, highly recommend them. They didn't pay me to say this, but that's a great place to go as a hobbyist and someone that works in IT. I buy cables and adapters all the time. Uh, mono price is a fantastic place to get that. Um, so here's the thing though, I had that extension on there running out, but then, and things were working great for a while, but then I started getting some disconnects. Uh, and I was reading, as happening to a lot of people online. Um, I hooked my headset directly in. I determined it wasn't the headset itself, it was the cable. So one of the things that I had read was that people had used um, an HDMI to DVI converter, actually, and that uh, seemed to help. And there, there's a couple theories. The going theory that I saw online was um, that it, you know, it, it's basically reducing the bandwidth because when you throw through the DVI, you're losing like the audio and all that, so, which you don't need anyways, you're pulling that from your PC. Uh, so that might reduce the bandwidth and, and that might help with some of the disconnects. Uh, one of the things I noticed uh, every time I checked in the back, the HDMI cable uh, plugged in after I was playing was extremely hot. Uh, so it, I know it's pushing a lot of bandwidth and it's really pushing it. Uh, so I, I think that it was also maybe a heat issue as well. Uh, and maybe a combination of the two, putting it on the extension actually brings it further away uh, from the main board and, and that might help reduce some of that. I've been running uh, the setup um, all, all day actually with this new uh, adapter that I just tried today and it's been awesome. I was getting disconnects after like, you know, five, 10 minutes uh, and things have been working great today. So key thing there is I haven't, uh, I'm using the DVI port on my graphics card with the DVI to HDMI adapter from there I'm going to that 10 foot long HDMI extension, which I'll go ahead and show here so you guys can all see a little closer. Um, so here, okay, so here I have my PC, I have the cables going out the back, routing up here, and it's, I mean, I have all the, the different sensor cables, uh, and then, um, you know, obviously for the headset itself. So you can see, and a lot of this is temporary still right now because I'm not fully mounting stuff so I know, you know, make sure everything's 100%, but I just, just running over some seat clamps just to kind of hold everything together. So you can see how my cable's running. I just hang my headset off there so it's out of the way. Kids can't mess with it or anything like that. Uh, so the cable's going, here's where you can see it's plugged into the extension, uh, the HDMI uh, extension there. And then I have an active USB 3, which active may not be necessary, but it, it wasn't that expensive. So uh, active USB 3 uh, extension uh, going. There's even the extension to the back um, sensor that I have mounted right there. And these are just 3D printed, um, I got them off eBay actually, just 3D printed um, little mounts, uh, put on there with some 3M you know, um, tape, which is great. Um, and then you can see I have the pole, this PVC pole that I just have mounted up there. I just screwed in uh, just with the, some clamps, uh, screwed it right in and that's coming out here. And then this just you know hangs out, right? And then it hangs out here like into the, the play area, which is good. So th th it works great. So that was the setup for the full room, like VR, you know, setup, whatever. But the other thing was the, the chair setup too. Uh, and I had mentioned it uh, when I was, uh, you saw me playing the game. You know, this is like a haptic feedback uh, chair. So I wanted to show that off real quick too. So the setup that I have here off my computer um, is for the, the chair is just the power, power cable right here. 
And then just a standard audio cable here, um, just the RCA jacks on this side. And this is going to uh, my subwoofer output on my onboard video, uh, or I'm sorry, on my on onboard uh, audio card. Um, the thing too is I wear like headphones because I got kids and all that stuff too. So it's like, I can't have sound all that. So there, this is, there was a software setup too, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, but I'm using the headphones and then off that, I've also got these audio cables. Okay, so then on the chair, you can see here, take the sweater off. So you can see on the back of the chair, there's two base shakers that I have uh, installed on the back of the chair here. So I flip the chair over, this is where you see a lot of the magic happens. So here's the two base shakers I've screwed on the back side. Uh, you can see I have a base shaker here and there as well. I have everything wired in. I can't even remember now. I can't tell you all the details of how I wired together. You know, there's different uh, tutorials you can see on how to do it. I have a 90 watt uh, amp uh, right here, uh, powering the whole thing. And then basically power, I got the power comes in. Audio plugs into that uh, as well over here. And then basically all I do is from the chair is I just switch it on and then I can just dial in the amount that I want. Um, again, this is the specific setup that, that I did here. You know, it's, you know, try at your own risk, right? Like one of the things that I'm always concerned about is, you know, I didn't necessarily do all the math to see like, I may, this may be overpowered. I'm sure I have the possibility of blowing the speakers out. So you gotta be really careful when you're trying to dial everything in and, and kind of do that. And you can see how I just sort of mounted the crap out of this with zip ties here, um, just to keep this uh, in place. Um, it all works out pretty well um, to do what I wanna do. And it, it really gives a great experience, um, I think to, to the whole VR setup. So that's really the whole setup that I have. Um, like I said, I'll put some stuff in the description. Uh, because some people have questions about some specifics of things I bought and stuff like that. So I'll put some links in there. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed sort of this, this quick little run through on uh, kind of the setup that I have. If you have questions for sure, you know, post them, whatever. Um, you can answer that stuff if there's anything you want to see more or anything like that. But I um, just kind of wanted to get this out there too because there's so many people doing this right now and there's not a whole lot of information out there. Uh, and I, you know, I had to pull together, you know, several, a whole bunch of different sources of information to kind of put together the setup that I have. So I um, just kind of want to show that off. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much.